In the West Virginia countryside, beneath Summersville Lake in Nicholas County, lies the remnants of a town by the name of Gad. Inundated by the artificially created Summersville Lake, following the completion of the Summersville Dam in 1966, few traces remain of this lost village once located on McKees Creek. In this video, I will be covering the available history and stories of Gad, including the state in which it exists today and its relevance in the video game Fallout 76. This is the story of the sunken town of Gad, West Virginia. The story of Gad begins in the year of 1889. According to a 1945 report documenting the names and origins of locations in West Virginia. Though the information seems to be somewhat uncertain, the general consensus seems to be that Gad was established in 1889, the source of its name coming from the surname Gad with two Ds. With listings from Beckley, West Virginia, including one George Gad, as well as a Charleston source citing Cyrus H. Gad, L.J. Gad, and S.J. Gad. I did find a short personal accounting of life in Gad from an article written in 2009 by Leanne Arthur and Steve Butera, which was archived on the Wayback Machine. Siblings Marie Dooley, Fred Roberts, and Lou Skaggs grew up in the farming community of Gad. They each remember the town fondly. It was fun. It was a good, clean life. Hard work and plenty of food. And a good family, said Dooley, who now lives in Summersville. Dooley also recalled the Gad Town store where she used to work. They didn't sell milk and bread or soft drinks and ice cream. They had kerosene. You went in another room and you got a gallon of kerosene, and they had material and tobacco. Suppose they had Prince Albert tobacco, chewing tobacco and matches, she said. Skagg said every family member had his or her own job around the house since their father worked away from home. Mom made all of our own butter, and she made our clothes and lye soap, he said. It was just a simple way of life, said Roberts. It was just a low-key life. You left your doors open, you didn't have to worry about stealing, no drugs, a little bit of moonshine, probably, he also said. Summersville historian Stanley Adkins agreed with Roberts' description of Gad. It was neighbors helping neighbors. They all went to church together, they all went to school together, they all grew up together. They became a very tight-knit community, said Adkins. That kinship was lost when Gad was destroyed and families were forced to move away. They all went their separate ways and that sense of community by those families was never recaptured, said Adkins. While more written information and stories about daily life in Gad is very difficult to ascertain, at least on the internet, from the information I have gathered, Gad was a farming community that had many homes, a general store, post office, as well as a small school. For a bit more of a personal touch, I'd like to show some footage sourced from an excellent video created and shared on Facebook by Summersville Dam and Golly River Whitewater History. There's a link to their page as well as the original video in the description below if you'd like to watch it. I highly recommend seeing the entire thing. My name is Bonnie King Orcutt, and I lived at Gad, which is under lots of water right now down at the Boat Marina. We had a beautiful place over at Battle Runs where our, where our home was at. Those sets of grandparents had to leave, and uh, my aunts and uncles and cousins, and, and we were the age of the children of these people. They're only like now, there's maybe under five of the first generation that are still with us, all of them are gone. It's, and we are the generation that were the children then. My grandfather owned the store and post office there uh, in the teens. He sold it to Mr. Backus and moved to town in uh, the early 1920s. A lot of homes. In fact, there were probably 150 homes that were taken, maybe more than that, because we got them all here on this map. Uh, 
one room country school uh, with eight grades there. I can remember so well, and I, I don't remember how old I was, but the talk of the dam was for years and years before they ever built it. But nobody ever sat down and told us look they'll buy the property you'll get to move you'll even get to have a new house and so on and in my mind they was just gonna build a dam and flood us all out and we was gonna have to run like ducks somewhere you know i believe i was 20 years around 20 years old whenever we found out we were saddened in one way because my parents still lived there and they kind of hated to give the place up they were they were glad that they would be able to find a place that they could pay for with cash that they got from the dam Dad got $12,000 out of our place, and it was 79 acres with a house and barns, and the whole place was cleared land. But no one got rich. <laughs> no one got what their place was really worth. The beginning of the Summersville Dam project began with the 75th Congress passing the Flood Control Act of 1938, authorizing funds for the construction of several projects throughout the United States. The act called for the development of flood control infrastructure that also supported improved river and stream quality and promoted recreation. Due to delays caused by the Second World War and other difficulties for securing funding, the construction of Summersville Dam would not begin for over 20 years after the Flood Control Act. By 1960, excavation work began on a diversion tunnel over 1,900 feet in length. Once completed, the construction of the dam progressed, wrapping up in 1965 when the dam was topped out. Throughout its construction, residents of nearby towns witnessed hundreds of Army Corps of Engineer workers as well as the movement of heavy machinery and stone needed to build the dam. The plan for the reservoir included scenic overlooks, picnic and swimming areas, boat ramps, and campgrounds. In a November 2nd, 1965 press release, Senator Byrd reported that the Army Corps of Engineers expected over 1 million tourists to visit the Summersville Reservoir annually. For the nearby towns, the promise of increased tourism offered a new economic force help bring the region out of decades of decline as the coal and timber industries diminished their operations. On Saturday, September 3rd, 1966, Senators Byrd and Randolph and several West Virginia congressmen joined President Lyndon Johnson to dedicate the Summersville Dam. The Summersville Dam and Reservoir have both proven beneficial to the state over the last half century. Tourism did increase with the opening of recreational facilities around the reservoir, greatly benefiting the nearby city of Summersville, later becoming part of the Gauley River National Recreation Area in 1988. The dam has also proven to be an effective control against flooding on the historically volatile Gauley River. Summersville Dam is one of the three dams that control the water flowing into the Kanawha River Basin. In the summer of 2016, as a front stalled over West Virginia and dumped historic levels of rain across the eastern and southern regions of the state, the dam held back 42 feet of water, which could have led to serious flooding in the state capital of Charleston had the dam system not been in place. For all the positive effects the dam and reservoir have had for the state, the same cannot necessarily be said for the residents of the former town of Gad as well as nearby Sparks. Today, the last remnants of Gann lie underwater, nearby to the Summersville Marina. Summersville Lake is a notoriously clear body of water, being quite popular with scuba divers alongside its other recreational visitors. A number of articles I've read about Gad and Summersville Lake claim that the town is mostly intact, with one article from 2016 claiming that one family scuba dived on the location and took incredible photos of houses, cars, 
and other elements of the town still very much intact. However, after an absurd amount of time scouring the corners of the internet, as well as an unhealthy amount of time searching through Facebook, I have found zero evidence that this is true. Unless these photos were never shared or were removed soon after being posted, all of the evidence I've seen about Gad and how it exists today points to the contrary. There are plenty of photographs of the drained Summersville Lake, as every 10 years it's drained for routine maintenance down to around 55 feet. I find it incredibly unlikely that if such a remarkable underwater intact town still exists that there isn't any photos of it floating around the internet especially considering how hard I looked. Other articles I looked into proclaim that only small remnants, scraps, and pieces of the original foundations and roads are all that's left, which I personally find far more likely after all this time. If there were full homes, cars, and other infrastructure still underwater, then perhaps the few sunken boats in the lake wouldn't be the focal point of most of the scuba diving videos that I found. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that these articles and the people involved are lying, I'm just saying that I did a lot of searching and never found anything to support the claims. If you or anyone you know has access to any photos proving me wrong, then by all means feel free to let me know in the comments. I would love to see these pictures. They do exist. The only remaining evidence I've seen of this town's relics are a few shots of the old road leading into Gad as well as some other various assorted scraps. Now, perhaps it's not more visible due to the fact that the precise location just off the marina is where the town is shown according to its latitude and longitude. Perhaps it still sits beneath some of the water as the lake is never fully drained. Towns being submerged beneath artificial lakes and reservoirs is actually a lot more common than I initially believed. After researching lots of topics for videos, I found dozens and dozens of towns listed as being lost or sunken beneath such bodies of water. Sparks, like I mentioned earlier, was another town that was nearby to Gad that was also inundated by the reservoir. Information about Sparks seems even more sparse than that of Gad, but it seems that it was another farming community, officially established in 1907 and named after Joseph Sparks, a local merchant. The post office remained in operation until 1959. Just like the existence of the ghost town of Broken Hills, a topic of my first video for this channel, came to my attention due to its inclusion in the video game Fallout 2, I initially learned about Gad due to a location in Fallout 76 at the bottom of the fully drained Summersville Lake named New Gad. The Fallout games are set in a universe that diverged from our own in the 1940s or 50s, and in the Fallout story a nuclear war between the United States and China in the year 2077 brought about a worldwide apocalypse. In the latest installment of the franchise Fallout 76, it is set in West Virginia 25 years after the nuclear war. Included in the game world is the area of Summersville. In my adventures in the area in the game, I happened upon a shanty town at the bottom of the dry lake bed, with many structures clearly assembled after the nuclear war by settlers. While in the game it's inhabited by a variety of mutants, amongst the post-war structures is a collection of pre-war ruins of homes and other buildings, which can be seen as sort of a foundation for the post-war settlement. There's not much available lore concerning the founding of this settlement in the post-war years in the game, however we do discover that five years after the war in 2082, a group of raiders destroyed the Summersville Dam in order to flood nearby Charleston. Now the game map is greatly simplified and abbreviated from reality, so the flooded ruins of Charleston can be clearly viewed from the top of the dam's ruins. Just like with the Broken Hills inclusion in Fallout 2, I thought it was really interesting and thoughtful of Bethesda to include some real, almost forgotten West Virginia lore into the game in the form of New Gad. And this wasn't the only place where they showed great attention to detail in that regard.
Researching and learning about the story of Gad, Sparks, and Summersville was a very interesting experience for me. I have a bit of a personal connection to West Virginia as some of my family live in the Nimitz area. Also being a huge fan of the Fallout series, I love learning about the real world counterparts to locations included in the games. Especially ones like this, which are somewhat forgotten by time but somehow made their way into a video game. I really do hope that someday I'll uncover these alleged photos of intact underwater segments of Gad, but I'm beginning to believe that perhaps the existence of such photos was exaggerated a bit. I do hope I'm wrong, however. I would very much like to visit West Virginia again in the future. I haven't been there since I was very young, and like I said, I do have family ties there. If I do, I would love to visit Summersville and maybe dig up some local information and stories about the lost towns of Gad and Sparks. After all, not everything can be found online. That will do it for my story about the town of Gad. I really enjoyed learning about this and putting together this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, give the video a like, it helps me out a lot. And perhaps consider subscribing, it's free and I would love to see this channel grow. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all those who have supported me thus far, and I hope to see you all again in the future as more videos come online. There is many towns that met a fate similar to Gad out there, and I have some ideas on similar topics to cover in the future, so thanks again for watching. Till next time, take care. With the Corps of Engineers, when a dam was built, the nearest town got the name. Well, like I said, Gad Dam just wasn't, wasn't too popular. So the discussion went on a while and it was decided, no, 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 it will be Somersville Dam.